It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across the USA and around the world, we are Red Eye Radio. Mm-hmm. We, Eric Harley over there. Hello. I'm here. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary McNamara. Thank you very much. Thank you. For, yeah, it's just, you know, I can say, and then I'll, when I pause her, I went, wait a minute, I'm saying my own name. It just sounds... I mean, you have to sort of. You've got to identify yourself, but I'm, I, I thank you for coming through. I just know that when Eric Harley hears his name said out loud, Eric Harley is usually happy. <laughs> Outside of courtrooms, to be clear. <laughs> All right. We might as well start out with the latest poll. Uh-huh. All right? Okay. And everybody, if you're getting up right now, you relate to this. Yeah. <laughs> Because whenever I get up, did you ever see the beginning of uh, North Dallas 40? I know I did, but. And the football player, he's laying in, he's laying in bed. Yeah. And he can't, he's like. Oh. Yeah. And he yeah. played the yeah. day before. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I can't get out of bed. Nick Nolte can't get out of bed. He's just like, and he's got pills all next to him. And it's like, oh, 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 yeah. oh. By the way, that's a fair depiction. You and I have actually witnessed some NFL players walking in hallways at, in our buildings at times. Yeah. And they they walk. And and this is long after they've played. <laughs> well, that's you – know, I always uh, – for, for me, uh, I had joint problems uh, about 17 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I started uh, doing resistance training. The joints in your bone, to be clear, since yeah, the joints. since the legalization thing, we have to be clear which joints we're talking about. <laughs> we're not at a Portland Pickles game. <laughs> <laughs> in case you didn't hear, it's a minor league uh, team uh, in uh, baseball team in uh, Portland, apparently that uh, now serving edibles. Well, they Get came up with a edibles. brilliant marketing plan uh, to say, we sell weed. <laughs> hey, we should go to a Pickles game. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have the guys, you know, the, the uh, what do they call it? The guys or gals going up and down the aisles. Yeah, the vendors. The vendors, yeah. yeah. Gonna, the yeah. Ven- the vendors peanuts. Gonna... Get your peanuts. Weed. Get your weed. Ice cold beer. Smoke some weed. See, like growing up in Buffalo, mm-hmm. the vendors, some of the vendors were actually big celebrities. I'm not kidding. Mm. They used to be the Earl of Bud. Yeah. And he had a top white top hat dressed basically. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Just, and, and during the seventh inning stretch, he would do tequila on top of the dugout. He danced to the song tequila be, every yeah. single game everybody knew who he was he was a celebrity yeah they they became celebrities it's not like an actual big celebrity was there working part-time right they became celebrities get your beer make sure you get yeah. the hot dog there no right exactly yeah no it's not well, another actual, one was yeah. another one was conehead when the coneheads oh, came out yeah and he wore he basically had this little thing then a little cone on his head right. and i can still I, I was watching a documentary they're saying there's a documentary on Buffalo. All of a sudden, I see this guy talking, and I'm like, they don't identify him as, they just identify him as a regular person. I went, that's Conehead. <laughs> and you know what? If you ever went to a Sabres or a uh, Sabres game, especially, I don't know if he ever worked Bills, but he'd mm. be at Sabres games and the, the AAA Buffalo Bisons. Mm. And his, I can still remember, <laughs> the Conehead guarantee. Oh, yeah? Your beer is cold or you drink it for free. Oh. Up and down the aisles. Oh. Up and, and I'm sure, I'm going to guess it's something maybe that you see more in northeastern towns. Where what? the where the beer vendors at ball games actually become celebrities. I mean, in the city where people all know who they are. Yeah. Well, you're walking around, saying, hey, there he is, can I have your autograph? Mm. Wow, what does he do? Is he a rock star? Nah. Pedals beer at the games. Yeah. He sells beer. <laughs> but 
getting back to this, I don't know how we got on the cone. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the the average American now, this is a feel survey now. This is how you feel. All right. The average American feels at least 10 years older than they actually are. Amen. And they all blame the same thing. Mm. A new study has found that Americans over 45 years of age feel 12 years older than their actual age on average. Mm. Uh, The poll of 2,000 Americans aged 28 and older split evenly by generation found that 55% of people who feel older than their actual age blame joint pain and 45% held back their daily lives because of it. Mm. Mm. Uh, the ma- a majority of Americans, 85% experience some sort of joint pain. Half of those don't realize there is a direct correlation between increased muscle strength and reduced joint pain when, in fact, there is. Yeah, okay. Mm. Uh, I know that because I the resistance training changed everything i remember last week it was like thursday friday remember i told you i said eric i got up i said something's wrong with me all my joints hurt they're all like sore like i just worked out Mm -hmm. it was like wednesday thursday friday uh i think it was friday night friday night i went to sleep no uh what was it uh no thursday night thursday night i woke up came into work uh, th- and, and it was still there. I went home Friday morning, fell asleep for five hours, woke up completely gone. Haven't felt any of it. Hmm. I don't, I, does a virus attack your joints? Can it happen? I mean, it was weird. Uh, yeah. A, a virus can make you feel arthritic. There are a number of things that are fairly, um, transient in nature that, that can have your arthritis flare up for a day or two. Sometimes it's the atmosphere. Yeah, might have, I've never experienced that before. Now, the one thing is I sprained my ankle in basketball five mm-hmm. times mm-hmm. to the point where if you look at my ankles, if I show you both my ankles, I'll say this is the normal one. Yeah. You look at the other one, you say, dude, you need to go to a doctor right mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's that's not swelling. That's just the muscle built up around the right. Of my, it's my right foot. It's the right side of the ankle. And it's probably three to four times the size of the other side of the ankle, mm. but it was all muscle built up from the five very badly sprained ankles that I got when I played ba- a lot of basketball. Right. And uh, it started hurting about, ooh, 20 years ago. So now it may hurt for two or three days. And yeah, I wear the compression socks. They help. Now it hasn't hurt in two or three days now. So I don't know if it's arthritis or whether it's ligament where, you know, I'm hitting a nerve somewhere or because of the of the – excess muscle there's a nerve in there that's being hit Mm -hmm. i talked to my doctor and he goes well he goes "Uh, you want to get it operated on i go no (laughs) i mean get out i don't i don't want an ankle operation um but this was commissioned by motive health conducted by talker research the study found that people who feel older than their actual age said it manifests through body pain 55 percent getting tired easily 48 percent And feeling overall less active, 31%. 47% reported uh, they didn't feel their age. And 50% of Gen Xers and above felt particularly out of alignment with their actual age. Half of baby boomers, 54% of the silent generation and 45% of Gen Xers said they all felt different uh, than their actual age. And, and... Surprisingly, 27% of millennials responded to the pollster by saying, hey, you kids, get out of my yard. Yeah. Wouldn't that be the baby boomers? No, that's the that's the whole point of the joke. Millennials, because oh, oh, they okay. feel older okay. than oh, they okay. are. Yeah. Well, baby boomers felt an average of 14 years older. Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't feel 14 years older. I feel much older younger than my age just the stuff that i do well here's the thing um in my older age i've lost the ability to do math so i'm not sure how many years older i feel it could be 14 months i don't feel a day over 95 (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, it, it just depends on the day because my sleep, my sleep schedule, uh, all like with a lot of people, it fluctuates. Um, but also diet and everything else. Um, you know, nutrition, <laughs> my, my wife and I, this past weekend, we woke up, uh, I think it was Sunday and it was like, wow. We didn't even, you know, we don't drink. But it's like, why do we feel hungover? Because we each had like three cookies right at bedtime. So the sugar went to work on us. And it was right at bedtime. I was probably snoring and chewing at the same time. Um, and you can't do that. It's not a good yeah, thing to do. You, you kids out there. Yeah, listen. You, yeah, you don't know what's coming your yeah. way. Oh, no, just wait there, for it. There's going to come a day, because oh. I started laughing when you said it, because that's happened to me. Yeah. I'll wake up, I go, oh, God, am I hungover. Yeah, yeah. How much did I drink? Wait a minute. I, I didn't drink anything last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're having Skittles and uh, and a, and a, a full <laughs> sugar soda for breakfast now. You just wait. <laughs> You're only waking up with hangovers when you when you've earned them or oh, deserve them. No, it's, it's like you get my older, you get eye hangovers sockets in your life. hurt, and it was like your brain is fuzzy. <laughs> it's like what the heck? What did, what, what did I do? What did I? Do? <laughs> and it, it, it so it depends, and it's interesting too because um, there are days when I come home and I kind of mentally I'm going over my little project list. And being in Texas, um, for those in the Northeast, for example, you know, a high of 92, we're lucky to get below 92 at night sometimes <laughs> during the summer. But, you know, you want to get things done in the morning is the point um, during the summer you want to. And you and I were just talking, in fact, this time of year. The great thing is, is that you start getting daylight pretty early mm -hmm. and uh, some of the uh, non-noisy projects that I can do around, you know, pulling weeds, things like that in the yard. It's actually nice to get out there before the sun gets up in the sky. And so you do that. But there are days when I go home and I'm like, yeah, that is not going to happen today. Um, and then there are other days when I can't stop. There was one day I remember back in, I think it was 1987, and I had all this energy. <laughs> No, it was, I mean, I remember <laughs> one day recently, it's like I had all these errands and I kind of needed to get them all done in this one day. And I was like amazed. I was like, wow, I actually got all these things done. So the energy, like with everybody, it just kind of goes up and down. Do I feel older? Uh, my doctor will tell you yes. <laughs> <laughs> But I, no, I it, you know, the idea is that, you know, working overnights for 28 years, um, there's no doubt it takes its toll, uh, but I think I've been pretty good about it. And and part of that is that you can't do those other things, you know, cookies at bedtime, that's a no-no. <laughs> and and you, you just kind of have to stay on top of it. I don't get as much rest as my doctor says I should get, but he's a communist. And the things that I, <laughs> I do get the rest I'm supposed to get. Unless yeah, well, I'm good for problem you. sleeping. And you know those, but those are the problems for you know, you know, uh, millions of Americans. There are millions of Americans that work eight to five jobs and only get four hours of sleep. Um, you know, it's just kind of a yeah. I just you can't. know where you have to adjust. Well, I can't physically do that. Mm -hmm. I I can't. I could not adjust to getting four hours sleep. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I I just. I would not be able to operate. Yeah. I just can't do um, it. It's interesting. I had a, a uh, conversation with a nurse friend of mine, and she said it's just kind of the way people are. Some people, you know, yeah. four or five hours of sleep. I find that if I get eight or nine hours of sleep, I'm foggy. And it's rare that I get eight or nine hours of sleep, number one. And, and when I do, I can kind of notice, okay, I've been in bed too long. And I think, you know, it, it's you just kind of have to listen to your body. And I think that do we feel older? I think I think we're just quick to complain. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. actually 
I feel very good. I can't say I feel good for my age. I just I can I can just tell you I feel good. I don't know what you're supposed to feel it at well, my age. You know, it's interesting because uh, I saw Seinfeld being interviewed. It was in a, no, he's been in a ton of interviews. Yeah, he's seventy. Uh, and and they said, "Well, what do you think about your age?" And he goes, "I don't think about it. I don't." And I've really that's the thing. Unless somebody asks me or I see an article like that, I never think about my age. And Seinfeld says, goes, no, we're just on a road here and there's great paths to go on. He goes, so I don't think about my age or I, I, I just don't think about it. He goes, right. other people, he goes, but because he says, I really don't want to talk about it because there's nothing to talk about. I don't think about my age. And I don't. The only thing I did is when I got when I got close to retirement age and it was uh, you know, a few years back and, and it was, okay, do I go on Medicare mm. or do I stay on my private insurance? Mm. That was the first time I thought, how the hell did I get here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I never really, th- you're so busy, especially in a career like this, you're you're in survival mode all the time. Yeah. yeah. And so you're not, re- and I like that, by the way, that, that's not like a bad thing for me mm-hmm. to, to, to be in that kind of mode. I've always been that way, and I think if you're always that way, it's a challenge. It's not. It's not a bad thing. It's preparation right, mode. Right. Right. You're you're in preparation mode. You're in survival mode. Yeah. You want to be at your your best, and so everything else that doesn't matter doesn't matter. Yeah. And my I, age yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't. My age doesn't. Uh, uh, if it physically affects me someday, mm-hmm. then there will be decisions to be made. Yeah. But right, uh, right. Other, other than that, but I'll tell you that when uh, early three months this year, when I couldn't sleep, I think mm-hmm. I told you, if I don't get this cured, I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and right. so thank goodness it came around and, and uh, I'm sleeping now too good. Now I don't want to get out of bed. There you go. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, fix that joint pain, folks. Yeah. Yeah. 86690 <laughs> Red Eye. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howe's Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920. If you are a farmer or any kind of outdoor worker, this week you may be running into heat that is a lot more intense than anything you may have encountered before. And some of your best friends in that case? Rest, water, and shade. Especially water. Ohio State University Health and Safety Professor D. Jepson says drink at least one cup of water every 20 minutes. A lot of times people think, I don't want to drink that much. I'll be sick. If you're really out working in this heat, every 20 minutes, drink a cup of water. You'll feel much better. Also, wear the lightest, loosest fitting, light colored clothes you can get away with. And finally, here's one more clothing suggestion. Throw away that beloved ball cap. Instead, she says, wear hats with at least a three inch brim all the way around them. They block the UV exposure from your face the top of your ears, the back of your necks. 80% of our skin cancer comes from that part of our bodies. And wide-brim hats help keep you cooler as well. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Loops. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. What's this whole cheap fake thing about? We'll get to that coming up uh, following the bottom of the hour. And TikTok bans offensive ad from XXXY Athletics. They're a company yeah. put together. Yeah. You saw that, uh, you know, to uh, uh, to sell uh, women's sports clothes. I just watched it during the break. And uh, this is really, really bizarre. Mm. Uh, the uh, brand founder post notification that she received uh, a uh, a ban from TikTok for any of their ads because they promote women only playing women's sports. Yeah, we'll get to that. This is how insane it is right now.
Links to everything Red Eye on the website, redeyeradioshow.com. And he's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Download our Red Eye Radio app today. You can listen when and where you want. If you can't listen live, overnight. I uh, I did see the other day, I was going through, through one of my streaming channels, and I went, what, there's a movie about us? There was a movie done called Red Eye hmm. a few years back. So Yeah? It's not about us. <laughs> Just Let me guess, it's about a flight. Yes. Oh. And probably a criminal or a monster's on the flight. Yeah, probably. Think, right? There's always, yeah. Right. It sounds... Or, it sounds well, just because of my association with this show, no, the red eye sounds nefarious in general. Yeah. So, or you're just buy, you're just flying on a Boeing. <laughs> wow! I see. What, what's my flight on tomorrow? Let me, yeah. Let me, yeah. Hold it. I, hold on a second. I, I haven't checked. I'm supposed yeah. to. How long is the drive to Buffalo? <laughs> so go to, let's go to Buffalo tomorrow. Road trip. Uh, we're checking it out right now. Let's see where the flight is. Mm. Uh, or who, what I'm flying on uh, during the winter? A lot of times it's the Airbus. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. What is it? Boeing seven Boeing seven thirty seven. Hey, good luck. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, Boeing seven thirty seven eight hundred mm-hmm. going. Mm-hmm. Coming back, Boeing 737-800. It'll be fine. Next weekend when I fly again, Boeing 737-800. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Coming fine. back, Boeing 737-800. Look, you're a risk taker. That's all That's all that says. <laughs> you're like getting out there taking some adventures. Uh, let me check the August flight. Boeing 737-800. Yeah, man. <laughs> You're an adrenaline junkie is what you are. Coming back, Boeing 737-800. See? See? You're one of those people that does one of those base jumps every once in a while just to, <laughs> just to make the heart beat, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's... I get it. Uh, well, the, the looks like the flight's full tomorrow, so <laughs> nobody else is backing off of it. Yeah, we're all in this together. <laughs> <laughs> If your captain comes on and says, uh, "I'm sure it'll be fine," I need to get my I need to get my upgrade to first class because if it's going down, it, give me a shot. Yeah, uh, I want to let you know. Welcome aboard this Boeing and uh, free booze. <laughs> um, <laughs> women and children first. <laughs> um, yeah, you know the you know the best thing though mm-hmm. about flying these days. Mm-hmm. I know this sounds stupid. I was telling it to my dad the other day. The best thing is I've got T-Mobile. Mm-hmm. And you know when we fly, it's mm-hmm. like it's it's like we're always connected. Yeah. And but it's it's like nineteen bucks mm-hmm. each way. Mm-hmm. Well, with T-Mobile, you got your T-Mobile cell phone account. It's mm-hmm. yeah. It's, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's it's fan it's fantastic. And in the next two weeks, well, normally uh, because you and I can, you know, what, because of what we do, we can work by looking at our phone. It's not yeah. just entertainment. Sometimes right. I, I don't know. Sometimes I might uh, look at you know or read something for entertainment, but but ninety nine percent of the time it's, it's work. Yeah, it's work yeah. related, and it's right there. I can do it on the phone. I, I don't have to bring a. A tablet or a laptop? Can I charge it to the uh, company? Mm, no. No. Okay. But yeah, so having uh, T-Mobile's great. I feel like I'm paying my phone bill mm-hmm. most months with you know by getting the free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> I pay my Netflix, so I don't even have to pay yeah. for that. Yeah. I don't get for some reason I could never get into Netflix. I have Hulu. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So. Uh, but uh, one of the things that uh, we talked about earlier in the show, we said, all right, what are the what's the administration, the Democrats really up to? What is their end game uh, with the whole cheap fake? And one of the things that we brought up was. They're they're trying to see if they can get social media. To ban Biden videos. I don't think they're going to get there. They're not going to get there with X. But if you see TikTok, we'll have that story of them now saying, what, you represent an organization or a company that is promoting only women should play women's sports? Mm. Well, that's offensive, 
and you're out of here. You can't post on TikTok anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I think that's what they're hoping for. And then I was just going around, just uh, checking out some of the news headlines, and uh, out at four a.m. And thank you, Fox News, for listening uh, to us. White House cheap fakes response to Biden videos, part of a push for social media censorship. Yep. As the general election season nears, because the before I get to the reading the part of it that's I think it's important, uh, they're not going to win this. No, no, they're not. No. Go- they've already lost it. The 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 emphasis was sort of was sort of gone the other day. They had to address it somehow. They're desperate because these videos are killing them. Yeah, absolutely killing them. Of Biden doing it. They're not deep fakes. These things have not been digitally altered. They're making that up. And like I said, the only one that they the only thing that I've seen they have is in the video where the president was looking. You know, when he went away from the group of uh, G7 leaders, that there was a guy in a parachute who landed near him. And, it appeared and, that he may be staring off into nothing. And you didn't see that guy. You, the didn't, parachute. See that. you yeah. didn't see the parachute guy. But right. but when the parachute guy came down, as everybody said afterwards, yeah, but it really doesn't make much of a difference. He still wandered off right. and, and stood over there. Mm-hmm. Like oblivious to everything else that was going on, right? What in he was, that moment? What he was supposed to be doing with the world leaders stand right. over here to take the picture over right. here? That was the thing, and, and so, uh, so that was really it. That's the only thing that I saw. Everything else was a totally legit. Well, they were all legit. What they're saying is, since you cut out the second of that video, it was at that that point uh, a cheap fake, and it wasn't. No, but. As right there, right here in Fox, as the general election season nears, White House officials are dismissing as cheap fakes a series of viral videos circulating on social media uh, that purport to show President Biden in declining mental acuity. But a conservative tech expert counters that the videos are genuinely troubling and that the Biden's uh, Biden administration's pushback is part of an election buzzword effort aimed at pressuring social media platforms to take action against the Biden videos, Mm -hmm. the uh, and it says the Andrew Bates, the White House spokesperson, told Fox News Digital, the discredited right wing critics of President Biden who spread other debunked lies are clearly threatened by a wide range of nonpartisan fact checkers who have pulled back the curtain on the cheap fake smears they're forced to rely on since the last thing they want to discuss. (laughs) I love this. Since the last thing they want to discuss is Joe Biden's agenda to cut taxes for working <laughs> families and keep bringing violent crime to historic lows? <laughs> I know it's. Like, it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Did he confuse Biden with Trump? I know. <laughs> the conservatives don't want to talk the issues. Republicans don't want to talk the issues. Democrats do. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, their panic reaction to mainstream reporters, including the Washington Post, NBC News, and Politifact. Citing misinformation experts taking anti-Biden cheap fakes apart says more than we ever could, Bates says. <laughs> yeah, uh, an example of, a, of an actual cheap fake would be Charlottesville. Yeah. An example yeah. of a, an actual cheap fake would be uh, the photo without proper perspective of the Border Patrol agents on horseback. Yeah, yeah right. You're right. Yep. Absolutely. Those those are cheap fakes that not only the media used, but also the Biden administration used in going after those Border Patrol agents. And then, of course, on Charlottesville, we, we know how that played out. And, you know, you had, my gosh, Chris Wallace and everybody basically repeating that lie over and over again by leaving out the entire quote by Donald Trump about Charlottesville because not everyone is buying the Democrats explanation. However, this is all part of election slogans and buzzwords. According to heritage foundation, tech researcher, Jake Denton, it's very clear what's going on here. They're trying to push a new term underneath the school of misinformation to try to pressure social media companies to take action on videos of this nature. Uh, The term cheap fake is also being used just a week before Biden is scheduled to uh, debate former President Trump. This kind of requires a ramp up stage where you allege that something is a cheap fake or that it's malicious in some kind of uh, way related to misinformation. And then you have essentially the evidence, the fact 
pattern, whatever, to go and push the social media companies with takedown requests because it's misinformation regarding an election. So to me, that's the kind of seed that's being planted here. We had said that to start the show. And then- Another uh, uh, cheap fake example would be uh, Rick Perry making a comment about Barack Obama and using the words dark cloud and uh, yes, NBC yes. News actually edited what he said. They edited it down to make it seem like it was something racist that he said. And they got caught. Goes at the that, end, those are cheap fakes. As he says, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there's not really a lot of science to it. They're experts, but what are they really analyzing? There is truth that needs uh, uh there is truth that there's a need for expertise in deep fake production but when it comes to something like a cheap fake or just a broader term of misinformation you're largely just shifting through junk on social media and saying what's real and what isn't it's not really a very scientific or professional uh exercise he continued the that the administration's intention is to gaslight the american public into believing that what they see on social media misrepresents his current state. However, the reality is that the videos accurately reflect his current cognitive ability. He said and urged people to reject these terms and bud words and just assess the videos as they are because they're very damning. Another cheap fake. Actually, this would be an expensive fake. The dossier. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, that's a deep, that would be a deep fake. That's a, that's a deep state fake. No, hmm? that's a deep Hillary fake. That's a deep state Hillary, expensive, cheap fake. Yeah. Uh, and finally, TikTok has permanently banned advertisements from XXXY Athletics. This relates because if the videos of, of uh, Biden are making it, mm-hmm. they're going to look at it and go, well, geez, if TikTok is banning any company that promotes that women should be able to play women's sports, right. we can get TikTok to take down these videos right. of Biden. Exactly. Uh, but they uh, permanently banned advertisements from XXXY Athletics athletics a clothing brand that stands against the inclusion of trans identified males in women's sports and for safety and fairness for female athletes uh the heartwarming ad features women and girls advocating for reality sex-based rights and encouraging people to be brave in that fight i've seen these commercials by the way on streaming channels yeah a lot lately. yeah yeah i just uh watched uh, yep. it myself earlier brand founder jennifer say posted a notification she received from the social media giant uh, to X, which stated your account has been permanently suspended because it does not comply with our advertising policies. We enforce our advertising policies through a mix of technology and human moderation. We have detected this policy violation using a mix of automated and manual measures. You can still log into your account, but your ads will not be delivered. The notification stated that XXXY Athletics Advertising on the platform may violate TikTok's advertising policies by featuring offensive content. Say posted the advertisement that TikTok took issue with, which urged parents, athletes, and others to stand up against biological males yeah. being allowed to play in women's sports. The brand launched in late March, created by former Levi's Global Brand President Say. Ambassadors of the brand include... Riley Gaines, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Paula Scanlon, another swimmer at University of Pennsylvania, uh, and uh, and and more. Uh, Riley reposted it. Lives of TikTok has posted it on X. So if you follow either of them, they you, it's a good. Uh, in fact, you can you can see a lot of things from both of them uh, on that matter, especially uh, if you follow them on uh, on X. But they posted the ad. You can see the ad for yourself. By the way, one of the reasons the president will disappear for the next week and has disappeared, basically, they don't want him to have another gaffe. Right. Coming up to the they can they believe if they can separate an entire week of no gaffes. Yeah, that will help him. It's got no I don't believe it's anything to do with preparation. No, I also believe they know they believe he's got to get out of the news. They got to stop him from speaking. And if they don't have Kareem Jean-Pierre talking for a week, that's another bonus. Right. Yeah, the debate one week from tonight. Wow. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE.
In front of radio, he's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. So, yeah, I, I do agree. We had said it earlier before we read that uh, uh, Fox News story. that uh, And we had said it, uh, I think, in the first hour of the show. We went, yeah, this, you know, their their goal has to be to try to force social media to stop anytime they scream and yell and say it's cheap fake, even if they take it down temporarily to review it, is one less day or one less hour that that video actually exists. Right. That's going to be hard for any social media to do, though. They know There's that going they, to be such an outrage. Well, I, I don't know that X does that. I don't know that Elon Musk is no, going to he take won't. those things down. No, so. he will not. TikTok yeah. might. Yeah, TikTok might. Facebook might. Right. Yeah. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.